what a great night. Great night so far. Um, exciting fights. Uh, we've had a little bit of everything, even. Boxing.com. If you missed any of the action, any of the great knockdowns, or some of the action while you were grabbing beer, you can actually purchase the event tomorrow morning for $4.99 at Murphy'sBoxing.com, featuring commentary by Peter Zimbor and Westport, Maine's prospect Brendan the Canterbury from Maine. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Ken Casey from the Dropkick Murphy's. A lifelong fight fan, full-time musician, and also a full-time promoter now. He's done a few shows. His very first show was at the TD Garden with a great fight featuring Danny Boy O'Connor. Now he started this memorial series. And now May 23rd, you're teaming up with Al Heyman with PCB Boxing. What's it like for you to get PCB Boxing? What's it like to get in? with some of the big names featuring this great show, May 23rd. Well, I think that what's been going on here in the Boston area is uh, with the boxing resurgence has really caught the attention of the national boxing uh, world and, and the big fights are coming here now. And you know, for all you people out there that are coming to this show, we, we really urge you to come and support May 23rd at the Gainus Arena. And anyone who's my age or older, if you remember Wide World of Sports, you know, big world title fights free on TV in the afternoon, and this is four o'clock in the afternoon at the Gainus Arena. You get two world title fights, plus Danny, Mark DeLuca, all the best of the area, and uh, it's Boston's chance to be on the big stage, you know, and, and, and all these local fighters deserve it, and um, you know, we're, we're very excited to take part in producing the show. We'll talk about Logan Cotton McGinnis, an undefeated, Rated 130 pounder, we're gonna see in our co-featured attraction. What do you know about Logan? What what should the crowd expect? Well, Logan McGinnis, who's up next, uh, we should all know it's his first time fighting in Boston, so I hope you all show him the love. He signed to Murphy's Boxing. He's 21 0 and 1. He's uh, from Canada, and when he fights up there, he fights in arenas. We're excited to be able to bring some of our guys up there and fight in Canada in front of the big crowds in his hometown, but. Logan's uh, an all-action kind of guy. Mickey Ward's his idol, and uh, you know, guys like that are uh, crowd favorites. So uh, I, I'm looking, we're looking forward to, to seeing uh, Logan come out here soon. So. And talk about our main event of the evening, Danny Boy O'Connor, a very good friend of yours. You've been taking care of him the last few years now. What is your relationship with? What is your relationship like with Danny? And how did you get involved with Danny Boy O'Connor? Well, Danny, Danny's like a brother to me. We just have a bond, and 
and um, you know I want to help him in his boxing career. And he's just got such a kind heart, a great family, and um, you know he's he's family. And, and, and when Danny fights here, uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm proud to, to proud to be a part of it. And you know just uh, all that Danny's done in his boxing career, and to see him on the verge of getting a, a world title shot is exciting stuff. We've had a great start as a premier as a promoter for boxing so far in New England. We thank you very much. How about a nice round of applause for Ken Casey, ladies and gentlemen. One more word. Don't forget, I know we've probably announced it already, but Ryan over here in the first row, Ryan Kilzeski, who had a knockout here in the first round the last time. <laughs> and his, his great-grandfather beside him. He's fighting uh, next Friday night uh, August, um, on the 17th down in Mohegan Sun, and it'll be on ESPN. So. Show Ryan the love and make the trip down to Connecticut too, all right? Of course. Ladies and gentlemen, we also have a very, very popular celebrity here in the Buffalo area. Very popular comedian. Have a nice round of applause for Steve Sweeney. In the junior lightweight division, and as Ontario Canada ball native ball Logan ball McGinnis ball makes his ball debut ball under the ball Murphy's ball boxing ball umbrella ball here in Massachusetts ball as he takes on Carlos Fulgencio. McGinnis at times has held the NABA title in the featherweight, junior lightweight, and lightweight divisions. You know what that means? That means the guy can fight. His opponent, Carlos Fulgencio, he's a guy that is. We've seen time and time again, most recently getting stopped inside one round by Ryan Kozeski, a world-rated featherweight and junior lightweight. Can McGinnis do the same to Fulgencio that Kozeski did to him last time we saw him here in Melrose? We'll find out in the next few moments. Logan McGinnis was Carlos Fulgencio here on murphysboxing.com, coming to you from Melrose, Massachusetts. It's always been some very good fighters to come out of Canada. Always a good scene. Now you see guys making their home there like Don Stevenson, Lucian Butte, John Pascal. Uh, traditionally, you've seen some fighters hail from Canada that you don't even really... I think if I was being Canadian, one of your favorites of all time, Arturo Gatti. That's right, yeah. Montreal, raised in Montreal, moved down to Jersey City. He was like 19 years old. Figured he'd have uh, more opportunity in the States, and it obviously favored him. But yeah, definitely some tough guys from another area. Both combatants in the ring right now, Logan McGinnis and Carlos Fulgencio. We'll get the official ring introductions courtesy of Kazakhstan's favorite ring announcer, John Pena. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for your special pole feature attraction of the evening. Scheduled for six rounds, this at catch weight of 132 pounds. This bout is proudly sponsored by Sailor Jerry, Spice Navy Rum, and the referee in charge of the action, Mr. Paul Toyle. Now, we introduce you first. Fighting out of the blue corner to my right. He's wearing white trunks and black trim, weighing in a trim and ready 132 pounds. A veteran of 19 professional victories with 15 defeats with 12 big wins coming by way of knockout. He comes to us from Miami, Florida. Please welcome Carlos Fulgencio. And his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner to my left. Wearing green, white, and gold, he weighed in at 131 and a half pounds. Undefeated as a professional with 21 victories and eight big wins coming by way of knockout. 
from Ontario, Canada. Brandon, you hail from West Fork, Spain. How far from the Canadian border are you? Just under 40 miles from the Canadian border. And then uh, the first major city is St. George, and then, of course, Quebec, which is about two and a half hours uh, from my house, my doorstep. This bout brought to you by Six Sailor rounds. Jerry Spiced Rum. Proud sponsors of Murphy's Boxing and this broadcast here on murphysboxing.com. Carlos Vilgencio wearing the white trunks with the black trim. Logan Cott McGinnis is wearing the green and white trunks. This one's scheduled for six junior lightweights. And right from the get-go, we are seeing Logan McGinnis with a bit of a cheering section behind him go to the body and then a nice stiff left jab upstairs to Vilgencio moments ago. And another one. Yeah, you could feel the love in uh, his ring entrance. You know, Logan Cott, I think he's already uh, formed a fan base here in New England. He came out to... Uh, that song that's in the movie The Fighter, and I think the crowd uh, and also enjoyed that. And he's coming out strong here with some nice jabs to the body, staying very busy, and uh, definitely a crowd favorite already. Entrance music performed by the promoter of tonight's event, Ken Casey. That's the Dropkick Murphys, the Warriors Code, a song they wrote about Mickey Ward. You can't go wrong mentioning Mickey Ward in Boston. People love him. I think it was a matter of time before somebody mentioned his name. I'm surprised he's not here tonight as he often is in attendance in these local boxing events, supporting his sport that has made him who he is today. Well, Jim said doing a good job fighting off the ropes. But he's been eating a lot of leather, and that left jab has landed hard at least three, now four times to my count, courtesy of Logan Cotton McGinnis. Yes. Yeah, I think he's in trouble here on the ropes. This is where you should be finding him. Oh, that body shot right there. That's low. And they're going to say that is a knockdown. It was a left hand on the belt line, courtesy of Logan McGinnis, and a bit of a delayed reaction by a referee, Paul Doyle, in starting to count, which I think led many to believe that he was going to initially rule it low. Yeah, from this angle, it looked a little low, but again, going right back to the body. He was trying to get to the side of the ring before the referee signaled to. McGinnis wants to finish this one and finish it in style. Yeah, he's definitely got that clear cool instinct, uh, you know, which is, I think all fighters need to have. And he's, he's looking in this night, but although his opponent is coming back with some shots of his own off the ropes. Body shot right there. TKO over Carlos Fulgencio here in Melrose, Massachusetts. Put his punches together very impressively. Um, you know, those body shots definitely were the deciding factor, I believe. But he went upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs. You can tell that he definitely has some experience and he puts his punch together very well. Carlos Vigencio is signaling to his corner that he was slipping due to poor traction on his boxing shoes, but that does not seem to fit in with the narrative which I saw. Now he's arguing with the guy in the front row. That's probably not good.
So Logan McGinnis will improve to 22 and 0. Nine of his wins coming by way of knockout. Essentially grabs a win against Fulgencio here tonight. Be nice to see how he fits in the mix with other guys in the junior lightweight and featherweight weight divisions out there. There's Ryan Kozeski from the area, Louis Rosa from Connecticut, keeping it within New England. On the world stage, yeah, you've got some very interesting fights at that weight class. Yeah, I think him and Ryan would be a really good matchup. time with the stoppage inside one round right now from John Vina. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes and 55 seconds of the first round. Referee Paul Doyle stops this contest. We win it by TKO victory and still undefeated Logan Cotton McGinnis. Two minutes and 55 seconds of round one. Logan McGinnis with a first round TKO over Carlos Fulgencio after multiple knockdowns. And now for a post fight interview, we go to Butch Stearns. Peter here with Logan McGinnis. Logan, uh, I mean, quite honestly, not really much of a fight. You had control right from the beginning. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm coming off an 18 months layoff, right? So, I mean, we need this kind of fight to get back in there. Um, and get fighting again, right? But I mean, I need a couple of rounds to get get my feeling back. But hopefully, we're going to get back in there in May, right? I'm, I mean, I'm signed with Ken Case now in the Murphy's Boxing, so big things are going to happen. Um, I'm going to be here a lot often, so I'm going to make a big fan base here. And I mean, I got exciting style. Unfortunately, you didn't get to see too much of it tonight, but uh, I got got a, got around in there, hurt a guy a bit. But I'm going to be back and, and fighting a lot more Sometimes here. Sometimes you get in the ring and it takes a while to feel a guy out and to learn things. Yeah. So are you disappointed it, it didn't go a little longer tonight? Yeah, I definitely. Like right now, like I said, coming off 18 months, I need rounds, right? I need rounds to get back to where I was. Shake off the little bit of rust I did have. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't get more rounds. But a knockout's always nice too, right? Get back in there and get a guy out of there. But, I mean, if I could have dragged it out a couple more rounds and then got him out of there to, to get a little, little more rust off, right? But that's all right. We'll be back here soon, so... No worries, you know. So for the people that haven't seen you fight, or maybe the people that came here tonight and didn't get to see a lot yeah. of you, and we're streaming this out tonight and saw yeah. you, what type of fighter are you? What are they going to see if they stop? Oh, I'm, I'm a pressure fighter. I like to come forward, pressure. I like to hit the body, dig the body. As you've seen tonight, that's what was hurting the guy with body shots. But I'm going to come forward. I'm an exciting style, right? Um, I like to mix it up with guys. I can also box too, but I like, I like to do it both, right? I'm a pressure fighter. I like to come forward and fight. All right, congratulations. All right, thank you so much. All right, Logan McGinnis. Winner of the fight. Now we got one more big fight. The main event. Danny Boy O'Connor against Michael Clark. Back to you, Peter. Logan McGinnis about to address the crowd here in Melrose, Mass. I'm coming off 18 months. Uh, Right, I, I had a, a rough time. Uh, I, my manager passed away. I had two uh, bad injuries, but I'm back now. I'm healthy. I'm fresh. Uh, I got a great guy, Ken Casey, behind me now. A guy who's helped me through the past 18 months, staying in touch with me, um, and helping me out a lot. Um, this is gonna be my new home. You're gonna see a lot more of me. Like I said, unfortunately, you couldn't see more of me tonight. But I'm an uh, exciting style. I like to come forward. I'm a pressure fighter. I like to hit the body, and uh, I'm, I'm a, a great person, I'm a humble person, and I can't wait to come back here. All right, thank you. Logan McGinnis making as many fans in Canada as he improves to 22 and 0 tonight. Hey, you're coming from Canada, you come to Boston, you're on Boston Street, you want to stop off at McGreevy's Third Base Saloon, a fine place to have a drink and get some food. McGreevy's Saloon on Boylston Street in Boston. Still to come tonight, our main event, Danny O'Connor taking on Michael Clark. Ten rounds of welterweight action in our main event of the evening. Danny O'Connor, as I've mentioned, a 2008 United States Olympic alternate. Michael Clark, a former world title challenger, also an alum of the Contender TV show. He was on season two of that show, which was ultimately won by Grady Brewer. Two Red Sox tickets and two tickets. This main event brought to you by Murphy's Boxing. Danny O'Connor versus Michael Clark, forthcoming. Edwin Rodriguez and Mark Toluca. At this 
Stephanie who pulled the winning tickets for us. Peter Zimbor and Brandon Berry calling the action from ringside. And we'll have the main Our event momentarily. We're coming to you from Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Coming up, our main event between Danny O'Connor and Michael Clark. Ten rounds of welterweight action. We caught up with both Danny O'Connor and Michael Clark yesterday at the pre-fight weigh-ins. Mark Vaz spoke with both of them, and here's how that went. You know, it's something I've been doing, um, like you said, for a long time. Uh, fighting guys in their backyards, uh, coming in as the underdog, but something I'm used to. I adapt to it. I'm a, I'm a veteran at 41 years old, and, you know, I love what I do. Uh, you know, I fought a lot of soft paws uh, in the past. Uh, Spry with a lot of guys like Manny Galloway in Columbus, Ohio, a real slickster. Um, and, you know, it's boxing. You know, it's, I mean, you, you, you have that in boxing. So uh, I'm used to it, that the soft paw styles. And I'm pretty slick myself for an old guy. And uh, I think we'll have a good chess match out there. Uh, you know what? Going, going to a fight with somebody who has that much power, I'm really not a strong fighter myself. Uh, uh, and I always say the shots you don't see is the shots that hurt you. So, uh, you know, um, kudos for him for not having that much power because I don't have that much power myself. So, like I said, it's going to be a, a chess match. Okay. Danny O'Connor, welcome to Melrose. I'm happy to be here. Danny, you were actually just here about a month ago. Tell us what you did last time you were here. Last time I was the uh, commentary for the fights. It was, uh, it was a good night. It got me really excited to come for this time. The, the crowd was lively and uh, it's a great venue. It's a nice atmosphere. So uh, I'm pretty excited to, to fight here tomorrow. I listened to your commentary, actually. I watched the fights later on, and, and uh, Teddy Atlas better be careful. You could be gunning for his job. <laughs> I am gunning for his job. That's why I'm practicing now. <laughs> Danny, you had a little bit of a, uh, a time off after, uh, after the fight with Vivian Harris. You took a little bit of time to regroup, and you've been back with a couple of really nice wins. Uh, tell me what you look for tomorrow night. Uh, just get back in the ring. I mean, I'm excited to do this. I box because I love it. I love the way it makes me feel, and uh, I'm excited for... Uh, to be able to get in there and think and figure them out and use my game plan and just get back in the ring and fight. He's a slick, experienced guy, and when we interviewed him earlier, one of the things that he said is is that he has a great deal of respect for your boxing ability, uh, that, he, that he sees you as a very similar style to his own, that it'll be more of a chess match. Is that how you see the fight? Um, yeah, that's exactly how I would say it. It's like a chess match, and something like that is what I get up for. That's what I like, someone that's going to make me think and you know, uh, have the chance to figure them out and, and to outthink him, and, and that's what I strive on. That's what I really like. Obviously, we never want to look past an opponent in any case, but what is your real fight looking at the, at the immediate future of Danny O'Connor? Um, well, I'd like to hop right on the May 23rd card that's coming here to Boston. Um, you know, as the boss of me and running my team, I kind of have to keep an ear to the ground of what's going on, but I don't look past any fight, so I'll be worrying about uh, today and tomorrow and you know anything could happen anything could happen so once tomorrow's done then I'll game plan for number two terrific easy uh, easy uh, time making weight this time you you were right actually a pound and a half under what the contracted weight is how are you feeling in in training and in the gym uh, I feel great I feel great I think uh, the training camp of being home in Boston around my family has made everything you know they improve that much better um, the change to being with Hector has as the as the coach now, um, bringing the technique back and the foundation of my boxing, um, I feel really confident. I feel really great. I'm in a, in a 
good space right now. Terrific. Congratulations, Danny. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks a lot. You know, it's something I've been doing. And we're back here at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts, where it is time for our main Ladies event of the evening. This fight brought to you by Tullamore Dew Irish Whiskey. Tullamore Dew Irish Whiskey, official sponsor of our main event, Danny O'Connor and Michael Clark. This one is scheduled for 10 rounds in the welterweight division. Michael Clark in the ring right now. Danny O'Connor about to make his entrance. Danny O'Connor, a 2008 United States Olympic Alpha, who is an undefeated prospect coming up the ranks, had his very first fight on Showbox on the Showtime Network and unexpectedly lost that fight. Made some changes in his career. Regrouped, got with Murphy's boxing, suffered his second loss of his career against former world champion Vivian Harris in a fight that many, including myself, who called the fight, felt that he won. Since then, He's regrouped with some good performances, most recently against Andrew Farmer here, or excuse me, in Plymouth, Massachusetts, on a Murphy's Boxing Show last October. And Michael Clark tonight, he's got a wildly veteran. Michael Clark into this fight with a record of 44 wins, 12 losses, and one draw. Clark has fought plenty of solid opposition. A former world title challenger, also was featured on season two of the Contender television series. His most recent appearance in Massachusetts, he fought the top Irish amateur to stand out, Jamie Cavanaugh, and was TKO'd in a losing effort. We'll see how he fares against Danny O'Connor tonight. One criticism of Danny O'Connor's career that's always been there, Brent, is his lack of power. 24 wins, eight of them coming by way of knockout, 33%. However, in his most recent fight against Farmer in Plymouth, in a fight that was broadcast on Fox Sports 1, he really put his shots together very well and seemed to be a lot more aggressive than a lot of folks remember him being and was able to get him out of there. Do you think he'll be able to get someone the caliber of Michael Clark out of there tonight, given his experience? Yeah, I think so. I think we saw some changes in Daniel Conner's game. I think that uh, the brief retirement, maybe he uh, made some changes mentally, physically. But when we saw him fight in Plymouth, I believe that was a little bit different Daniel Conner. He's putting his punches together very well. Showed some power that we hadn't seen before. And uh, I, I think we're going to see a lot of the same tonight. And you mentioned the retirement. Danny O'Connor at one point did say he was done with boxing. It didn't last particularly long. He's back in the ring again tonight. As he'll be taking on Michael Clark in the Massachusetts. A rockless Danny Boy O'Connor crowd in attendance. For the official ring introductions, we'll go inside the ropes to John Bean. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get to our main event of the evening, we'd all like you to please rise and move your hats for the singing of our Star Spangled Banner and hit to sing our national anthem. A talent from Bridgewater State University, please welcome the talented Michael Patrick Bradley. Patrick Bradley, ladies and gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 
for the thousands in attendance and the thousands watching on live stream from Murphy'sBoxing.com. Murphy's Boxing proudly presents your main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing at a catch weight of 149 pounds. Your referee in charge of the action once again, Mr. Bob Benoit. Introducing first, fighting out of the corner to my right. He's wearing black, trim it red, with white lettering, and weighed in at 147 and a half pounds. His impressive record reads 44 victories, 12 defeats, one draw, and 18 big wins coming by way of knockout. A former title challenger, he comes to us from Columbus, Ohio. Please welcome Michael Cole Blood. Clark! And his opponent fighting out of the red corner to my left. With the black shirts with white lettering, he also weighed in at 147 and a half pounds. His excellent record reads 24 victories with only two defeats and eight big wins coming by way of knockout. He comes to us from Framingham, Massachusetts. Please welcome Danny Boy. Ten rounds of welterweight action between Danny O'Connor and Michael Clark. O'Connor wearing the black trunks with the white trim, Clark with the black trunks and the red trim. This fight brought to you in part by the Clatter Fund. Danny O'Connor, a big part of the Clatter Fund, a charity started by Ken Casey of the Dropkick Murphys. Round one underway between Michael Clark and Danny O'Connor. O'Connor, the southpaw. From the get-go, it looks like Danny both tries to jab and throw a left hook to the body downstairs at Michael Clark. His jab seems to be pretty effective already. Uh, Clark comes out swinging a few punches. Owen just got uh, caught O'Connor with a nice left hook. Getting a sense that Danny's punches, are, he's got a little bit more zing on him, like we were talking about his last fight. It looks like he's really committing to his punches more so now than he has early in his career. Danny really opening up against Michael Clark here in round one. One thing that sucks about Michael Clark is this is a right hand from Danny O'Connor that is flush on Michael Clark. Clark is hurt. And Clark is down and he does not appear to want to get up. That is it. Fight's over. That is it. Danny O'Connor with a right hand first round knockout of former world title challenger. Michael Clark. That's a statement. I think it is very obvious that Danny has done something different in the past year or so where either he found some power that he didn't know he had or he created some and uh, he's definitely punching much more effectively than before. Of all the possible endings to this fight tonight, I think a first round KO for Danny O'Connor was probably the least likely. He's a guy that Time and time again has won decision, 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 and when he has gotten guys out of there, it's been accumulation of punishment, which eventually has done the damage. That was one perfectly placed right hand to the side of Michael Clark's head by Danny O'Connor. If, th if this was your first night watching Danny O'Connor, you would not believe that his record shows only single-digit knockouts. You would think that he was a power puncher. You know, that was his ninth KO in uh, 27 fights now. And uh, it looks like he is a power puncher. Well, we'll get the official time of the stoppage, courtesy of John Vina, and then Butch Stearns will chat with Danny O'Connor afterwards and send it inside the ropes. We have the time, one minute, 18 seconds of the first round. Gregory Paul Benoit stops this contest. Your winner by a knockout.
Danny O'Connor to find the home for that right hand, which ultimately put Michael Clark away. Didn't even break and a sweat, Pete. Didn't even break a sweat. He might, he might have a tougher time with this interview. To find I out, we'll send it to Butch Stearns. To talk to you guys. I just want to thank everyone for coming. Hey, a lot of hard work goes into this. I'm just happy to have all the support. I love you guys. To the next one, thank you. So, great night. We're streaming this back to Ireland. Let's start there. What do you have to say to your fans back in Ireland? Oh uh, man, all my support across the pond has been huge. I talk to them every day over social media, and uh, they always have great things to say. So, it means a real lot to me that I can do something that I love and have people appreciate it. So, to everyone across the pond, Ireland. England, everything. Thank you for all the support. Scotland, I love you guys. You always love to win, and you love to win easy, but boxers like to box. You didn't get much of a workout tonight. Uh, yeah, you know, it was, it was what it was. I worked really hard outside the gym, and I come here with all the hard work and the preparation done, and, you know, everything is done on the outside of this ring. So um, I couldn't ask for a better night. I'm happy with the outcome. Most of all, I'm healthy, and I can come right back May 23rd in Boston. Um, Right back on the train. Yeah, May 23rd, it's going to be on NBC. It's going to be at Aganis Arena in Boston. Uh, you're building up to something special, aren't you? Uh, I'm just taking it one day at a time. I'm having fun right now. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy doing it for a living. Um, and if a big opportunity comes, I'll be more than happy to jump on it. And uh, I just want to say hi to my wife, Diane. I love you. I'm expecting our next child in September. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Hi, Boy a perfectly Murphy's placed boxing tonight right here hand to from Danny O'Connor to the side of Michael Clark's head was all she wrote. One right hand, and Michael Clark could not beat the count. And with that, O'Connor improves to 25 wins against just two losses. Nine wins now coming by way of knockout with a big first round KO of a former world title challenger tonight in Michael Clark. Well, it's been an excellent night of boxing here at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. We saw Marcos Forestell improve the 2-0 with the first round TKO of Philadelphia's Brandon Ali Garvin. We saw Matt Darty of Salem, Mass make his pro debut with a second round TKO over Moses Rivera. Timmy Ramos pro debut with a second round stoppage of Gilvin Santos. Alexander Magziak Lopes recovered from a first down to sweep rounds two through six to run to win a unanimous decision over Lucretia Meacham. Greg Vendetti found himself in a dogfight with Angel Valdez early on, but regrouped and beat his opponent into near submission with a fourth round TKO. We also saw Mark DeLuca face a tougher than expected challenge in the very durable and serviceable Larry Smith. Logan McGinnis made a nice New England debut with a first round TKO over Carlos Fulgencio after a few knockdowns. And then in the shocker of the night, a first round KO courtesy of Danny O'Connor over Michael Clark. Well, it's been an interesting night of boxing here in Melrose. Thanks so much for being here with us, Brandon. Thank you so much for having me, Pete. This was an honor. This was literally just another dream come true in the boxing world. Thank you so much to Murphy's Boxing and Ken Casey. I appreciate this opportunity and I would love nothing more than to get an opportunity like this again in the future. I love the sport. Congratulations to all the fighters tonight. And um, I hope everybody enjoyed a good night of boxing here in Melrose. We want to thank the sponsors tonight, Murphy's Boxing, also the Clatta Fund, doing a very good job of bringing you the action you saw on your screen tonight, courtesy of murphysboxing.com. Well, for everyone here at murphysboxing.com, Butch Stearns, my broadcast partner, Brandon Barry, I am Peter Zimbor. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time at the fights. Have a great night, everyone.